Stephen Jones has been speaking all around the country. Uh, you know, I think sometimes we lose our self in the memory hole, and we forgot what it was like when we didn't have a major physics professor like Stephen Jones uh, and the Scholars for Truth validating and legitimizing a lot of the research that can be done and is being done on the corpse, okay, the footprint in New York City, and that's the World Trade Center Towers. Now, thanks to Professor Stephen Jones, we have literally some of the first forensic evidence to take this to trial, to ask questions, to get subpoenas. And I'd like to see people rally around that. Retired Dr. Jones now tours the country, speaking about the results of his scientific research into the reasons for the collapse of the World Trade Center tower. He's going to go over this research for you now. I'll tell you, uh, when we were out in LA at your conference, Alex, and uh, I had one of my longtime friends there that I knew long before I woke up, and he still had a problem, you know, with some of the information, like some of your friends. And he went, he saw all the great speakers in Los Angeles, and when he saw Dr. Jones speak, he said, "This is done." Now I want to know the answers to these questions, and I think my family will want to know the answers that this is the research that's going to wake up my family, and that's extremely important. Uh, you can't say much more for somebody who has sacrificed his career, his well-being, his reputation, allegedly, uh, to lay it all on the line to get to the truth, to get to the truth of 9-11, and I'm just so honored once again to introduce one and only Dr. Stephen Jones. <laughs> quite a challenge. My style's a bit different from Alex. <laughs> Thanks for staying, Alex. I appreciate you very much. Love you, brother. Okay, so tonight <clears throat> I will be showing some evidence that has uh, not been shown before. So I'm, I'm glad that um, you're here. And uh, yeah, I might want to turn the mic up. Uh, it's not uh, Alex. <laughs> yeah, you've adjusted them. <laughs> Let's see, let's try this one more time, would you? Let's see, I don't think that's actually working. Yeah, absolutely. It is? It is. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Thanks. <clears throat> ah. Okay, it'll get me wired up here. Let me, while he's doing that, um, I'll use this mic for, for a minute. Two years ago, I was at a lecture, <clears throat> and uh, I was oblivious to all of this. And the woman giving the lecture said, if you think that those towers came down just because they were hit by jet planes, you have some major surprises ahead of you. And when she said that, about half the audience, it was about this size, uh, burst out into applause. They had awakened. I was in the other half that was saying, well, uh, what is she talking about? I don't know. So I got onto the computer. Fortunately, we still have the internet. And uh, it was just a, just a few days then that I started into this process that has brought me here and has resulted in some very interesting research. Once you see the collapse of Building 7 and so on, Let's see if this is going to work. I guess it will. Good. I'm going to take off the sound for a minute there. <clears throat> Building 7 on the left. Uh, once you see that coming down in the way it does, then I timed it and compared it with controlled demolition, which you see on the right. I was basically hooked. I mean, the... Uh, the way that thing falls down is not just because it was hit by a jet. It actually wasn't even hit by a jet. So, you know, there, there's something very strange about this Building 7, the way it comes down. 
Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this tonight. In past discussions, I have done so, but um, I want to move on to some new material. And if you would like to, you know, I'd like to point out that the 9-11 Commission didn't even mention the collapse of Building 7. I'd like to tell you how in the FEMA report, but we just don't have time to go into that. Uh, the FEMA report uh, said that our best hypothesis, which was fires plus some damage, has only, for Building 7 now, our best hypothesis has only a low probability of occurrence we had time, we'd go into that. The uh, NIST report on Building 7 is way overdue. It's supposed to be out this year. And when it comes out, they, see, they, they commissioned another company to do it. So when, what they asked this other company to do was to look only at floors 8 to 46. This is a 47-story building with subfloors. And so they basically asked them to put blinders on as they consider the collapse of Building 7. It's rather disappointing to uh, us scientists and engineers. Many of us now are writing in this uh, Journal of 9-11 Studies. So for those of you who would like to get a good introduction to 9-11, I highly recommend this journal. It has, uh, I believe, the best peer-reviewed papers the most. We have over 30 papers now in the journal. Mine is in there. Why indeed did the WTC buildings completely collapse? Here are some of the other authors who you'll find in the journal. There are three physicists now published in this Journal of 911 Studies. Professor Griscom is a, is a fellow of the American Physical Society. I was greatly relieved when he uh, joined the effort to talk about 9-11. Uh, Dr. Jenkins, you see there. Frank Leggy is in Australia. Uh, J Joseph, Joseph Firmage has written a very nice paper outlining uh, 42 different events related to 9-11 and comparing the, uh, good, comparing uh, lie hop, if you know, uh, let it happen on purpose with my hop, with the official conspiracy theory that 19 hijackers were able to pull this thing off. So he compares those three theories against events. Very well written paper. Uh, and uh, uh, James Gurley and Greg Roberts are here. Are you guys are new here. Stand up. There's Greg. And where's James? James Patrick. You know, it's not just me or Alex or Webster or, you know, there's a lot of us now uh, working in this field. I enjoyed all the talks today, by the way. Now, um, by the way, J J um, Greg Roberts has brought, his paper is available for a small fee and will help the conference finances. So I appreciate his work on that. So part one, there's two parts. One is the uh, flowing orange hot material, of which I, I did. Oh. Is it? Move it, I would think it would be a good idea. This is where we're starting. Yeah. No, it's because it's underneath your jacket. Oh, that one. Uh huh. There it is. He's got it. Okay, I'm going to start this while this takes a minute to start anyway. I double the sound level. We're going to just let it go. Or I can turn it for you. Let's get out here. We have these iron core copulates. Don't see it. Yeah, that'll be good. And turn it for Dr. Jones. Okay. So you probably haven't seen there. That's a little louder. Whoa! Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. So if you look then at this video, you'll see this is from Japanese TV. This shows the orange uh, material flowing out. Let's do it again. 
of the South Tower. This is a view that uh, just came out recently.